don't be a hero. And uh, this is this is probably gonna surprise a lot of you guys, like a lot of you guys. But scoring zero points is okay. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Not, and uh, welcome back to Pokemon Unite. Alrighty guys, so as you may know, I have been playing a ton of Pokemon Unite, and I really am enjoying this game. I've I've done a, a few videos about it, anywhere from battle pass reviews to loot boxes, but now it's time to talk about some of the more competitive aspects of this game, and specifically, my personal five tips for how to hit Masters in solo queue, right? So obviously, if you guys have not played a, a ton of Pokemon Unite, uh, there is a ranking system in the game and the highest you can make it is Masters, right? And arguably, the most difficult way to do that is to play the entire ranked uh, without any other pre-made teammates, meaning I go into every single game just by myself and climb up the ranks until I hit master. So uh, what I want to do is I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to give you guys my top five tips where you probably have not heard just about anywhere else. Uh, I've been, you know, on the Reddit a lot. I've been seeing other streamers, but most of these tips have not come up a ton. So uh, hopefully this will help you, specifically you, to do well in ranked play and make it on your way to masters, right? All right, so let me go ahead and switch screens and let's start off in the stats. Um, so I can illustrate the first of the five tips I want to talk about and uh, yeah, then we'll be right back. Alrighty guys, so we are here in the stats screen because, you know, why not? Um, but uh, anyways, so the first thing I want to talk about is I'm actually going to jump down here to battle record uh, and I'm going to go ahead and filter this and switch this over just to ranked, right? So in total, it took me about 240 battles, well, I guess exactly 240 battles to hit master in ranked. I haven't played any games since then. And I had a win percentage of about 57.4, which uh, again, for, for a solo queue player is actually incredibly high, right? Uh, I, I had somebody on Reddit kind of compare it to doing better than the Yankees, right? That's a better win percentage, win rate than the New York Yankees, right? So again, don't get discouraged if you see a win rate around 52%, 53%. I mean, if you're winning more games than you're losing, you will climb two masters, right? Um, it will probably get lower the higher you get up in ranked, but that's not something meant to discourage you. Again, you're doing just fine. If you guys see all those top ranked players like 80% and stuff, don't worry about those guys. Like, they're actually not as good as you think. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing a lot of five stacks and they're doing a lot of stomping early players in the early days. So that's why they have impossible win rates. Don't worry about those guys. Those aren't your competition. Your only competition in hitting masters solo ranked is yourself. But anyway, into the tips. All right. Uh, the very first tip that I want to talk about, probably the most important tip I can give you, is play a character that you're good at, not a character that is the best, right? So play your best character, not the best character, right? This is this is huge. Now I will I will say there are some characters that you'll you'll do better as if you're if you're solo queuing ranked, but this is huge, right? Because just about every tier list in the in the early games the early days of ranked and uh in, in pokemon unite will always put cinderace above greninja right and as you can see in my past few matches uh obviously a i'm a i only solo queue and b i play a lot of greninja right sometimes i flex into other roles uh if i need to fill a specific role in the team like snorlax or crustal or nine tails but majorly uh i played greninja right and greninja is is arguably worse than cinderace right and that's that's fair. Most most people would argue that Greninja is a good character, but again, he performs worse than Cinderace. Now, here's the thing, though. Uh, I switched over here to my favorite Pokemon screen just to show you guys this. I am bad at playing Cinderace. I mean, theoretically, right? In, in ranked, I've got 42% win rate as Cinderace and a 62% win rate as Greninja, right? So even though Cinderace and Greninja play very, very similar roles in the game, I play a very good Greninja and I don't really play a very good Cinderace. So if I were to just blindly follow the tier list, I would pick Cinderace every time just because Cinderace is a better character. But again, that's, that's kind of why I wanted to illustrate this. Pick your best character. As long as it's not, you know, conflicting with somebody else on the team or it's not causing your team comp to be terrible, like having like three speedsters or even two speedsters or having like three tanks on a team or having three supports. As long as that's not what you're causing your team comp to do, play your character uh, that you play very well. It's, it's more important. I mean, I would rather have somebody who's an expert at playing Charizard 
than somebody who's subpar at playing Machamp. Even though I think Machamp is a much better character for high level rank than Charizard, I would any day of the week take a professional Charizard over a subpar Machamp, right? And my Greninja was the same way, right? And it took me a long time. It took me a lot of ranked matches to figure this out. It's like, hey, I'm just better at Greninja. I'm just better at Mr. Mime. I'm just better at Ninetales. I don't play as well with Cinderace, right? I don't play as well with um, some of these other characters. Cramorant is, is another great example. Look at my win rate on Cramorant. I play a horrible Cramorant, right? But I play a wonderful Alone in Ninetales. So that's just it. Like you have to find what characters you do well as versus the characters that you're sitting here with a 28% win rate, right? Don't go so far out of your comfort zone just to fill a team comp that you cause your team to lose. And had I played Greninja in more of those matches, maybe I would have seen more victories, right? So again, tip number one is, is super important. Play your best character, not the best character, right? Just about after the balance patches, just about every character can kind of compete anyway now. So again, this is super important and it's going to help you climb ranked so much better. Alrighty, so for the next the next few tips, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch screens here, and I'm going to, uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll switch to the background screens, right? And I'm going to showcase my last game as, as I go through and talk about the rest of these tips. So uh, actually, we'll jump right back. Alrighty, guys, we're back, and uh, we've got our, our very last Game Masters here. You can see that I'm kind of insta-locking into Greninja, uh, just because, you know, it really does help to play Greninja as far as some of these other tips I'm going to tell you guys when it comes down to how I approach Masters games and how I approach, you know, the, the solo ranked experience. But regardless, luckily in this game, we had a very good team comp and the match went super well, as, as you can guys see in the background as we continue to talk about these tips. Uh, okay, so the second tip that I want to talk about is, and as you see me setting the map path here, is try to always go either top or jungle, right? And the reason for this, and this, this is going to help you at any rank, uh, no matter what you're at, the reason for this is because if you're top or jungle, you can rotate to Dreadnought. So Dreadnought, I'm sure you guys have heard this if you guys have seen the Reddit or if you guys have been playing a ton of ranked, Dreadnought is super important. The amount of global EXP that it gives your team will just give you guys crazy level advantages and help you win team fights. And winning team fights is so crucial to both the early game and the late game, moving into Zapdos and preparing for those final matches, right? So again, whatever you do, I, I strongly recommend you try and force yourself into top or middle because at the end of the day, guys, the only person on your team that you can control 100% is you, right? You can't control your teammates. You can't force them to play right. You can't force them to know rotations. You can't force them to understand how to lane. So the more that you can play jungle or the more that you can play top lane, the better you will perform just because you can control your own rotations and you can make sure that you yourself are in the right place at the right time so that your team always has at least at least, I mean, in higher ranks, at least a 3v2 or 3v5 at the worst case situation, uh, you can try and steal Dreadnought, right? All right. So that again, that's going to be th the first tip is is just always make sure to go top or or middle. And, and uh, this may be difficult if, if there's a lot of other competent, competent solo queuers in your game, because if they all understand they should go top or middle, of course, it doesn't work. But from personal experience, it doesn't happen too often. And you know what? Try to do this even if you have a lot of other people like if, if like you have a team that Instalox claims uh, central top top still try and claim top otherwise and see if you can get one of your teammates to switch off of it to go bottom as long as it makes sense for the team comp right there are some some circumstances where certain things should top lane and certain things should bottom lane but as a general rule it's not that important who tops lanes and who bottom lanes so again try and top lane yourself just because again you can control your own rotations um so and uh, yeah it, it, it's it's super important all right, so the next tip that, that I want to talk about in this game is something that a lot of people just don't quite understand. I, I see a lot of people have issues with, right? And that is don't be a hero. So I guess tip number three, uh, don't be a hero, right? So what I mean by that is, and again, I see this post on Reddit all the time. I see people post like these crazy scores where like, hey, I scored, look at, look at this score sheet. I scored 247 points and my team lost don't be a hero and uh this is this is probably gonna surprise a lot of you guys like a lot of you guys but scoring zero points is okay and i know i know a lot of you if you have not played a lot of ranked you probably are super confused by what i mean by that but here's what i mean if you're a part of every single team fight if you're always there for your team if you're winning dreadnoughs 
if you're killing Zapdos, whatever it is that you're doing to help your team, if that results in your team winning the game, but you personally scoring zero points, that is totally okay. Now, I would take that teammate any day over, uh, let's say, a Cinderace or a Talonflame or something else that while I'm in the middle of a 4v5 Zapdos fight, he's over there in left field scoring an inner goal for, I don't know, 100 points. Great. And then we lose by 700 points, right? This is what I mean. Don't be a hero. Don't go score all of these points for yourself and just ignore your team in these team fights. Yes, it should be your responsibility in a lot of ways if you're trying to solo queue to Masters in a sense to kind of carry your team because again, you're the only thing you can control. But again, don't be a, such a hero that you're you're ignoring your team, right? You're, yes, you, you end the game as MVP. Yes, you scored 300 points. But what does that matter if you lose by 700, right? So again, this is a team game. You have to make sure to play as a team game. Be there for those team fights. And if you end the entire game as a win and you scored zero points, chances are you did every single thing right. Uh, that That's fine. I, I have plenty of wins where I had zero points because maybe I killed two or three enemies in a team fight um, at Dreadnought and I died. That's, that's great. That's fantastic. Trading three lives for my own and dying? Great. Maybe my final hit killed Zapdos, but I died and allowed my three teammates to go score 100 points. Great. That's fantastic. So again, don't be a hero. Don't get so caught up on this idea of, I have to score. I have to score. I have to score. A lot of games, you won't even score uh, until Zapdos. Like All of my scoring in, in games and all of my team scoring has very often came down to the last minute and a half of the game. That's totally fine. Again, guys, don't be a hero and don't get so caught up on this idea that I have to score. It's really not that big of a deal. It's not as big of a deal as you think. And overall, it, it a lot of times it's just gonna it's just gonna hurt you more than it's going to help you. Alrighty, so these these next two tips are are gonna be something that I don't see talked about a lot, but uh, are are very important, right? So tip number oh boy, what are we on? Tip number four uh, is going to be fairly simple here, and it's going to be don't requeue immediately after you lose, right? So there will be times where somebody can have a bad game and, you know, a loss can happen for a number of reasons. It can happen because you did something wrong. Uh, I had one loss that still haunts me to this day just because I stepped off a goal point to kill a Bouffalant in the final 10 seconds of the game and a Lucario came and scored like 30 points and I lost, right? So again, losses happen for a variety of reasons, but sometimes they do happen to bad teammates, right? Uh, and a bad teammates can come from a number of things. One of the most common ways you get a teammate who doesn't belong in a rank is if they queued up with a team of four really good players and they were a part of that team as well. They weren't so good, but they kind of got carried up to a certain rank by their team, right? And they're like, oh man, I'm super good at this game. I'm way up here in ultra. Let me solo queue and do nothing, right? So that happens sometimes. Uh, and if you do get one of those people on your team, take a step back, wait a moment, let them queue up, let them get into their next game so that you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to deal with it. Luckily, they're not super common. But again, if you if you have a, a terrible teammate or just a really terrible team or you notice that you've come up against the same five stack a couple times in a row, hang back, let them queue up against somebody else and just wait a couple minutes to requeue, right? So, I mean, again, this, this is a, a super important point that I don't see talked about a lot. And, you know, right along that same point, if you do have a teammate that is doing something that's completely ruining a game, like idling, in the after-match report, make sure to report that player, right? Uh, that'll stop them from being able to play ranked for a while, which, if they're idling and ranked, they do not deserve to be playing ranked anyway. So, please, please, please report teammates that are that are straight breaking the rules by doing things like, you know, AFKing, because it's super, super bad and super, super toxic, right? Just, just something that I want to pop out. Now, we see nine tails here for the, for the next tip, which is going to be, uh, again, our, our actual, our final tip, tip five. We see nine tails down there killing the Audinos. Kill the Audinos that spawn after you lose your first tower. This is something I very rarely see players do, even in the top level uh, leagues. But those Audinos that you get when you lose your tower are actually a comeback mechanic, right? So, and uh, here, I'll put up a little clip of, of me killing these Audinos just so I can show you exactly which these Audinos are. But please, please, please kill these Audinos. So especially if you lose the first Dreadnought. A lot of times what will happen is if you lose the first Dreadnought is that Dreadnought will die and that team will push your first tower and destroy your first tower, right? The whole team of four or five, however many of them showed up to that team fight, right? So if you lose those, you're down experience because you lost the Dreadnought, right? You lost that global experience. The game is helping you to come back. This game is so incredible with its comeback mechanics. Obviously, Zapdos is an insane comeback mechanic. Love or hate Zapdos, you have to accept that it's, it's 
an extremely powerful comeback mechanic, right? Um, but a lot of people don't even talk about these Audinos. So once you lose that first tower, these, these three Audinos that spawn are so much extra experience just for you, just for your team, that if you just leave them on spawn, like if we look at our enemy's map there, they have all of these Audinos up just waiting to be killed. You're missing out on so much experience, especially for them who have now lost both Dreadnoughs in this match. It's you lose such an incredible amount of experience by not farming, not killing those Audinos. So please, please, please kill those Audinos. It'll help you catch up that XP that you lost, uh, killing Dreadnought, so don't be afraid of it. Also, don't be afraid in late game to kill the jungle ads, right? It's If your jungle is not coming back and killing these ads, don't be afraid to kill it. Like, so you see me killing Bufalant and Ludicolo. It's not quite the same as the Adinos. Pretty much everybody will kill these. And obviously, you see me leave here because the jungle did show up, and he's the hyper carry. I'm not the hyper carry. So I'm going to allow him to to get those kills but if they're just sitting there and nobody's killing them it's not doing your team any good so make sure in late game that that those ads are always dead always on respawn timer uh, as you can tell in this particular game my team is doing fantastic pretty much every single ad that we have is cleared all of those audinos are cleared and that's a huge point in why we have this level advantage going into this final fight with zaptos and why we win this fight and of course you know we're not touching Zapdos. We have, we know we have the lead here, so we're not going to touch Zapdos. We're, we're going to just scout grass until we can eventually either get a complete wipe of their team, and then maybe we'll kill Zapdos, or we just leave Zapdos for the rest of the game. Right? Killing Zapdos is definitely not a requirement. Alrighty, so. Uh, again, all of these are, are, are just tips to, to kind of help you guys succeed, help you guys do better in the game. They're not a lot of tips that, I, that I've seen covered. And uh, as just a, one extra little bonus tip, Use Buddy Barrier. Use Buddy Barrier on anything. I know I made a, a tier list video, and if you guys are interested, you can check that out for, for all the held items. And initially, I did underrate Buddy Barrier, but the, the higher I got in Ultra, the higher I got in Ranked, I did eventually move Buddy Barrier all the way up to A tier or even S tier. But just as a bonus tip, in high level Ranked, just use Buddy Barrier on everything. It's just such an incredible item uh, for keeping yourself alive, keeping yourself in the fight for as long as possible, and keeping your teammates alive that you should really just be running it on everything. But anyway, guys, there you have it. So my team just killed the Zapdos, and like I said, this is my final match as I ascend into the ranks uh, of Solo Master. So, of course, we do go ahead and win this one. And uh, here we can see that the enemy surrenders. Alrighty, so just as a, a very quick recap for you guys uh, on what those five tips are. Tip one, play your best character, not the best character. Tip two, go jungle or top because you can control your own rotation to Drenna. Uh Tip three, scoring zero points is totally fine. Don't be a hero. Don't end a game with 200, 300 points to your name that you lose. Don't do it. It's not great. Uh, just, just please don't. Uh, tip four is going to be don't instant re after a loss and report players that need to be reported. Also, like you see me doing here, like spread positivity. MOBAs don't have to be toxic, right? So give your teammates good jobs. This isn't required. This isn't going to help you climb to masters, but even giving the enemies good jobs is something you can do. Spread, spread uh, positivity in this game, please, not toxicity. And finally, make use of the comeback mechanics in the game. Not just Zapdos, but all of these ads. Farm these ads. These ads are more important than even killing your enemies a lot of the time. You can let them score. If you, if you kill enough ads, if you kill all these Audinos, and you get that level advantage back, it gives you a better chance to killing Zapdos, right? And sometimes Zapdos will be your only path forward so if that's the case and zapdos is literally your only way to win don't feel bad about attacking zapdos right a lot of times i'll see players jump in and they'll be like yo uh we have i'm the only one attacking zapdos i even in ultra leveled games there have been games in ultra level where i as greninja solo killed zapdos and caused my team to win the game right if your only way to win the game is killing zapdos kill Zapdos. Start that fight. Do whatever you have to. The enemy's not going to start that fight for you most of the time. Start that fight yourself. Get it down. And if you die trying, if you fail trying because your team doesn't want to help you or for whatever reason, that's okay because you were going to lose anyway. So again, if your only option to win the game is fighting Zapdos, remember guys, fight Zapdos. <laughs> All right, guys. So those are my five tips and I guess the, bon the bonus tips with, with Zapdos and Buddy Barrier. But those are my five tips for how I was able to solo queue my way into Masters. And hopefully this helped, guys. Hopefully this helped. Uh, again, I haven't seen a lot of these tips covered in the Reddit or in other places. So hopefully hopefully that helps you guys to, to do better. Hopefully that helps you guys to get to Masters. Uh, and let me know, what if any of these tips helped you guys out the most? Or what tips have you guys found climbing to Masters that have really helped you uh, do better in ranked.
Let me know, guys, in the comments. And of course, if you guys want to see more Pokemon Unite content, uh, definitely consider clicking that uh, subscribe button. All right, guys, uh, I will see you next time. And uh, you know what? Thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me. Have a good night, everybody.